hard to find an EV that's properly capable of tarmac. For the time being, Subaru Solterra is probably as close as you're going to get to a full battery powered model delivering that kind of capability to any great extent. Developed with Toyota, it's the brand's first purpose built EV and includes quite a lot of what Subaru's learned in the last few decades about off road technology. On the face of things, it's difficult to ignore just how similar this Solterra is to its Toyota BZ4X cousin. But when it comes to drivetrain engineering, there are some fundamental differences between the two cars. First, unlike with the aforementioned, you can't have a front-driven Solterra. Secondly, more significantly, when it comes to the all-wheel drive setup, thanks to some software changes, this Subaru has a proper permanent four-wheel drive arrangement rather than Toyota's less effective on-demand system that only cuts in when a lack of traction requires it. There are other key differences too. Subaru provides variable brake regeneration paddles and an extra power drive mode to add to the usual ones, normal and eco. Plus, Subaru has chosen a slightly firmer suspension tune than you'll find in the BZ4X, along with a little more steering weight too though you experience it through much the same rather small steering wheel. This contributes to a sportier feeling than is served up by most class rivals, part of which is down to careful positioning of the substantial 71.4 kilowatt hour battery, which provides for a combined cycle drive range figure of up to 289 miles and sits low down as an integral structural part of the all new Subaru e-global platform architecture. The torque rigidity of this chassis is further aided by clever front and rear e-axle motors that save weight by each integrating the transaxle, the electric motor and the inverter into a single unit. Those twin motors provide for a 215 brake horsepower system output, 336 newton meters of torque and a 62 mile an hour from rest sprint time of 6.9 seconds en route to the usual modest EV top speed of 100 miles an hour. Thanks to a higher 210 millimeter ride height, this car can go further than just about any other EV you can think of off road, which is where you'll be able to use the two provided X mode drive modes, a snow dirt option or a deep snow and mud setting. The system includes grip control and adds a downhill assist control feature to ease you down the slippery slopes. The battery replenishment stats are competitive too. This car can offer an 11 kilowatt three phase onboard charger and will accept fast charging at up to 150 kilowatts, which will get you an 80% fill in 20 minutes from a 150 kilowatt DC charger. It'd be an hour with a 50 kilowatt DC charger. Your garage wall box with a 230 volt or 32 amp supply will take about nine and a half hours for a full charge. Subaru clearly doesn't see why it should have to substantially change the look of this Solterra just to make it significantly different to its Toyota close cousin. Subaru did, after all, have just as much input into styling this rather futuristic shape with its artful slashes and creases. But it was clear when the wraps first came off this model at the 2021 LA Motor Show that the brand wanted it to look a touch more SUV. As you may already have noticed, the main way the designers have gone about doing this is by altering the treatment of the front grille and headlights in a way that references Subaru's existing SUV lineup, hence the more overt hexagonal grille blanking plate and the addition of these beady little round lower fog lights. It's harder to spot this Solterra's differences from the side. Even the wheels look much the same as those on a BZ4X. 18 inch rims fitted to the base limited version with 20 inches fitted to this top touring variant. Students of the industry might also be interested to note that all of the multitudes of EVs now on the market, this is the only one actually badged EV. Make of that what you will. Another EV badge decorates the rear, where Subaru subtly changed the design of the LED tail lamps and, unlike Toyota, resisted the temptation to link them with a full-width reflective red strip. This split roof spoiler is interesting, and its aerodynamic properties are supposed to make unnecessary a rear wiper, so Subaru hasn't fitted one. 
Right, time to take a look inside. Well, Subaru hasn't wasted its time making pointless changes to differentiate this car's interior, so alterations over the BZ4X are restricted to the badge on the steering wheel that gains brake regeneration paddle shifters, plus there's the provision as standard of this digital rear view mirror, which displays camera images of what's behind. As we said when we tried that Toyota, we're slightly unconvinced that this is as luxurious a cabin as ought to grace a £50,000 upper mid-sized EV. Charismatic furnishing isn't everything, of course, and there's no doubt that this is the most sophisticated front of cabin design the company has ever offered, and in some ways, the most unusual. The absence of a glove box is supposed to create an area feeling, which unfortunately you don't really notice because you're hemmed in by this high set center console, below which room created by the absence of a transmission tunnel frees up open, lower, shallow storage space you'll hardly ever use. The other thing you'll notice pretty soon after getting comfortable is the unusual wheel and instrument binnacle arrangement that sees you staring through the spokes of a smaller than usual steering wheel at a Solterra branded seven inch digital combi meter instrument screen supported by these unusual gray slatted struts. Anything else you'll need to know will of course be found on this 12.3 inch central infotainment monitor. This multi-function colour touchscreen setups a vast improvement on previous Subaru infotainment technology and includes over-the-air updates, cloud-based navigation and a decently intuitive voice activation system. The steering wheel and instrument screen layout might take a bit of adjustment, but you'll like the commandingly SUV-like seating position and the supportive front chairs. Right. Enough on the front of cabin experience, let's take a look in the back. Well, it's certainly spacious in terms of legroom. You'll find it to be vast if you come to this car from a combustion-powered saloon or SUV of this size. Headroom isn't quite so noteworthy, so particularly lanky folk might have to take advantage of the backrest recline adjustment feature. More significant, though, is an issue that affects quite a few EVs of this kind, namely that the high floor level necessitated by the bulky lower battery pack means that the underside of your thighs could be better supported, though it's something that you'll only notice really keenly on longer trips. Does that long wheelbase translate into a vast boot capacity? Well, not really. The tailgate's powered, and once it rises, a 452-litre capacity is revealed, though it falls to 441 in this top touring version, thanks to the addition of the subwoofer needed for the variant's upgraded Harman Kardon sound system. That seat back reclining function means that you've the option of making the backrests a little more upright when you're cramming suitcases in. Three 82-litre cases would fit if you did that, or if you prefer, a couple of mountain bikes. Subaru's um, forgotten to install cargo sidewall catches too, so you've to stretch the ones on the seat shoulders if you need to flatten the rear bench. Once you've done that, you'll find that the space opened up isn't quite flat, but it should be quite sufficient for the needs of most owners. The last few years have been truly dismal for Subaru. That's what you get for missing market trends. First, the move towards SUVs, and now the trend for electric vehicles. The Solterra, though, does at least belatedly introduce the company into the EV market and with a very competitive product. If you already own a Subaru Forester or an Outback, perhaps you live in a rural area or on a farm, this is probably your future car. With its X mode and grip control systems, it's probably the best four-wheel drive electric vehicle currently out there. And with a set of chunky tires, there won't be many places you currently take your Outback or Forester that you couldn't also take a Solterra. We're surprised the brand didn't use this model's lengthy gestation period to engineer in the 800 volt electrical infrastructure that would have opened up access to the coming new generation of ultra fast public chargers. But we don't doubt that we'll see that with future Subaru EVs. 
For the time being though, this one is pretty close to what the company needs in this segment. Decently arresting to look at, just about competitively priced, and unlike most previous models from the brand, properly provided for in terms of connectivity, which ought to broaden this car's appeal beyond Subaru loyalists. But we've said that before about new models from the brand, then seen the sales figures trickle in. Will this car be different? It needs to be. We think you should give it a chance.